Hello everyone, it has been a while since I posted my last video, I haven't had the time or also because I wanted to make something unique in some way, uh, something that can be used on a real project because it's accurate or it has been tested. So for today I picked this project for, from Zadid and I'm going to be doing the interiors. So doing this organic interior modeling and seeing what can be done in Revit. Uh, so this space might be hard to understand at first, but uh, this is actually one space from these two images. So it's like the, the ceiling becomes this wall and it continues twisting to, to be the ceiling here. So if we go into the model and we start a new mass, so if I place these, uh, the, the, this line through points, and I just copy it across. I'm not trying to be accurate or anything here, it's just to try to show the process. Uh, so we get these lines that I would make, um, just go wireframe and make them reference lines. Uh, so that it's easier to change. So if I move some of these points up, And I start to get that shape. Um, I can move it a little bit further, but uh, but I see that it's already starting to make that uh, undulation. That's one of the prob problems with spline through points. So it's coming down, even though those last two points were in the same level. Um, but still, you see the, the, the behavior is not the best, but uh, anyway, for now, if we have this shape, it's lofted, and if uh, this uh, it's lofted across, so it's kind of it's actually smooth right now, just going in one level. But if we do want to this to to go up and down now, okay, so I'll, I'll move it like this. I'm just moving it manually, like point by point. There is not a, a a way to, to, to be sure it's actually going uh, smooth. Uh, so it starts to do this these undulations. So if I grab it the snip here, you see that it's going up here and down on that side. So if I put one side down, the other opposite it starts going up and down and down. So if you keep moving these up and try to eyeball it and get manually the, the, the best look, so it does look smooth. Uh, it's still this is not uh, it's not the most accurate method. Uh, so we, we we want to make to do this better. So I'm going to show you a, a few techniques. Here in this image, what we're going to try to do is get these two get going to get a snip. So this these two edges and make a loft across these two. So we, first we need those two lines. So we need a spline that does that shape for both corners. Uh, here, if you see on this side, we have like a general shape with a, a cut through shape. Um, how we would do it, so the general, uh, it would be like this, uh, running along there, so it would be a loft like that, and then you would have a void, that's just any shape, really. Um, could come out of, could extend longer than that, but it would come all along and cut the other shape off. So this is how it would work perfectly, so that you, you guarantee some continuity. But there is one problem with this, is that Revit does not really, uh, it doesn't do that. It does voids that cut solid geometry. Uh, you can do a solid void that cuts a lofted surface, but you can't do a lofted uh, void that cuts a surface. Um, I tried this with Fusion or um, uh, other software would do it, uh, but if you want to keep it in Revit, uh, you're going to have to do something else. So what we want to do is create these uh, edges, like with splines, that are perfectly smooth the way we want it. 
and then we can loft a, a, a surface across. So if we do all these, loft each one of these independently, um, it's going to be our best shot if we want to keep it inside Revit. So let's try to get these four uh, splines first. And we want it to be a spline through points only because the, the other spline tool that Revit has, uh, it doesn't allow us to go 3D, so it, it's always attached to a plane. But like that, so let's go into the model. And let's just do something uh, random now, uh, just to try the, the idea of how it will work. So it will be this type of spline, because it's the spline that guarantees like a, a smoother surface. And if you see, it is 2D, we cannot pull it up in the Z value. So if it is like this, spline through points, you can. But we have that problem that the spline through points, you have to adjust point by point in a way that it behaves and predicts well behaves a bit uh, not the way we want it, uh, harder to control. And if you look back on the top elevation, uh, the way I was doing it, it it's moving out of position. Uh, so if we come to the annotation categories, I'm going to create a new reference line, so a red reference line. Uh, this will help me to identify which ones are the main uh, driving splines and uh, another one that drives the form. Uh, so now I place uh, the new spline through point. I'm hosting it on the existing spline, if you notice. And now it, it will be attached to the spline, but I can't drag it up. So like this, it would not work either. Uh, so the best way is using the divide path tool because first you're going to control that the distance between each point is exactly the same it will help with the curvature so we have this then we do have to create a new point so now we have 12 points on top of the those points from the divided path but we will still need to place one more. So we're going to have to set the host for each of these to be the reference plane associated with the existing point and place a, a, another point on top of that. You'll know that the first one I select, if I don't use tab, will be the last one I placed. So the last one I placed is hosted on a reference point and will have an offset parameter that I'm picking change up and uh, now it will remain attached to that point see I can drag it up and when I move the spline the points will move with it and I'll be able to make sure that even after I created the shape uh, I can still adjust the driving splines that create the form because I'm guessing that this will have a lot of uh, back and forth adjusting to to get the best form that you're looking for. So if you see here, this edge, like the main edge, is going to be created by the green line now. Uh, and the red one is the one that's driving and making sure it's smooth the way you want it. But now we have a, another problem. So I'm trying to adjust it vertically. So I don't have a spline to adjust the smoothness of the curvature vertically. So if I go into a, a, an elevation, I already have this plane here because I needed to host the new spline that I'm going to draw. I can draw my spline with uh, my, my smoother spline uh, and I can do it anyway, okay, I can change it later. And make this the, the same red one, it's going to be an, another driving spline and now I would want to drive the edge spline by the red spline so I have to, if I create these lines uh, and you'll see that I can host 
So let's make it reference lines and uh, place one point here. It's better to do in 3D, but host by intersection, you see that it does move. And when I move my driving spine up and down, it will move. So actually, sorry, this is not the way, uh, because I do not want these to be part of the spline. The spline is going to be made out of the points that I'm hosting now there. So just drag those up and uh, and let's place a point in each of these splines, in each of these lines. So we can, I can, so I have to do it one by one, but I can, I can make it, I have to make it one by one because it's, it won't work if I select multiple points at once. Uh, anyway, I need to just here. But once it's done, you'll see that those points will move with my driving spline in, in the back. So these are the points that I want to create my edge a spline. And maybe I could use, uh, maybe not red. I can see that they don't behave exactly the same, the two types of spline, so you, you get things like this. And if you just uh, like give you the same result, but if you do have to, to have this more, uh, more tight curves, uh, you'll see that you, you could just add more points. So I could change here the divided path to a larger number. In the end, the points would, uh, would make it smoother or more as the same as the, the driving spline. So uh, I could actually make this, get it a different type of reference line. So I can create these guidelines. Uh, and I want to do this so I could, so that I could um, be able to hide the, the guide reference lines and be able to look at this properly without all the confusion. Uh, I know it's a long process and all, uh, but de depending on the job or if you're trying to do something that's really accurate, uh, it's gonna be worth the time. Because in the end, yeah, I can save this view that I have here and it's cleaner and I can see clearly the reference lines that are driving this shape. And you can just come and adjust the red driving line and it adjusts the form even after all the forms are created. So the next step, it will be to create the lofted surface. Actually, you can come here in Elevation and, and test it out and see how it works. It does have a few uh, behaviors that are not what you'd expect, but you can get around it. Uh, it's just because when it gets too close, it does something funny. But uh, in the end, it works. I don't think it's too bad. So you can see adjusting an elevation or on top on plan, it, it, the line will keep aligned with the other spline. So if you look here in this image, the edges that we're trying to create are these, and the lofts uh, will be, so our main splines, we're gonna have to do this process to all four of these, and these are the lofts that we're gonna create. So we'll create one by one, but uh, using the same uh, edge spline. So this video is getting a bit long already. Uh, I think I'm gonna break it into two parts. So I'll publish this first video and you can look for the next one where I will create the lofts and see how it works. I'll have a few tips on those too. So thanks again.